Yeah, so one thing that we try to always, and I always say I'm going to get tattooed on my forehead, is 211. 211. Do you yeah. know about 211? I do know about 211, oh, okay. but only because you told okay, me. Okay, because most people don't. <laughs> right. Um, but 211 is a number that is a, it's a, it's a national number, but in most communities, it's run by United Ways. And basically, it's like 911, but for resources. Mm-hmm. So anyone can call it. Welcome to Crowning Connections. This is Rob Clemens, and I'm excited today because you know we love the community here at Crowning Connections. You know we love business leadership at Crowning Connections, but very rarely can I get somebody who has got the like like the creme de la creme of both. I've set you up properly, right? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but her name is Blakely Roof. She is the president and CEO of United Way of Horry County. Yes, sir. Blakely, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very you, glad to be here. You know, I feel almost embarrassed, I want to tell you, that I've done so many of these shows at this point, and, and this is just the first time I'm having you on. Well, there's plenty of other people out there that I'm sure much Man. more... Um, perfect candidates for this humility so. too like she's what we're gonna call i think i've just come up with a title for you you're the ceo with humility I, how's that sound well, she's too humble to accept <laughs> it right <laughs> no that's awesome well well welcome on with us today um i want to talk a little bit about uh, united way of course um and just all the good things that are going on but you and i known each other for for you know a number of years mm-hmm. going back to like habitat for humanity days and stuff yeah you remember i think the first one we did was uh I remember she had, I, I want to say she had like six or seven eight kids. kids. Eight I'm, kids? I'm still very close with her. Wow, really? How's yeah. she doing? Her, yeah, her name was uh, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. How, how's she doing? What's she's she... doing great. She actually um, started her own business. She has her own trucking business, and wow. she has an employee, and she drives um, big rigs. And um, two of her kids, uh, she's got two kids at the early college, and one's about to graduate, wow. and they're all you know in school and doing great. She got married. and No and, way. Yeah, she just had a grandbaby. Her oldest daughter had a grandbaby, so I, I went over there and took him a bunch of my, you know, baby stuff that I, I didn't need anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. but I, I talk to her all the time. She's Man, doing really good. That's so cool. You know, one thing is is I, I, I loved, um, and, and I still do love Habitat for Humanity. Of course, we, we help them out at, at this company. But, you know, the thing is, is that you meet people like her that are really just need a hand sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean a hand in the sense of like a hand like, hey, let, let, let's go to that next place because she works so hard. And I knew that she was special. You know, she's talking about working jobs and she talked on a different level as far as, you know, hey, I went to this other career because I thought that I had a, a better chance of promotion mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, learning more. And so you knew she was special. And so it must be so cool for you to look at somebody these years later and she just continuing to grow and get better. She, she has been my inspiration since the day I met her. She was the wow. very first family I worked fully through the program with. And I remember when I found out she had eight kids and at the time I only had one. And I thought, and she was working, you know, at McDonald's Mm -hmm. and, um, she was a single mom and she had a really great credit score and she was just phenomenal. And I thought, okay, I can't complain about anything. If if she can do it, I can do it. And then, um, she went through, she ended up going through the program faster than anyone we had ever had Mm -hmm. before. And I just, she's just, she's just awesome. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad to hear I was part of it then yeah. because she was like truly special amongst special people. Um, but, but one of the things that I always remember, and, and for those who haven't been to a Habitat for Humanity, um, you know, I, I guess like grand, you know, uh, ribbon, cutting, ribbon cutting, maybe we'll mm-hmm. call. Um, so she has her eight kids mm-hmm. and, and they're lined up like, like they were like, a part of the company or something and they were so well behaved and I was just like man this is a, a person who's got her stuff together and they are well behaved yeah, they're all cool. very well behaved um, which was even more amazing yeah, about yeah. it and, and just to see you know they're all very involved in their school and sports and, and she was so excited when the first one got um, or second one he got in, accepted into early college and she said this is going to be the first person we've ever wow. had in my entire family that, to go to college and now she's got two over there and you know yeah they're doing all kinds of awesome stuff a testament that hard work positive attitude they can get you a long way yeah, so yeah. very cool well tell her i said hi i, nice will, to you I will yeah. i will yeah for sure well uh what have you been up to lately i mean you know yeah, yeah i think you were telling me before we got on that you you kind of just coming off a trip or something like that i did i did i went on an outward bound trip um to north carolina okay. with a program i'm in the um american leadership forum the waccamaw chapter mm. so it's a leadership program comprised of individuals from ori georgetown and Williamsburg counties. 
Um, we were the sixth class, and um, it's it's all about kind of um, – I say like the next step after leadership grand strand, um, you know, it, it's a much more deeper dive into issues about, you know, how to work amongst uh, from different county lines, um, you know, different backgrounds, different races, things like that. And so one of the big things we do is we go on this four day outward bound trip and um, it's quite an experience to oh, say the least. Okay. Oh, my, my friends and family kept calling it, when are you going on your survival trip? <laughs> Which was about what it felt like. So, Were you yeah. like having to like um, get your bow and arrow and, and hit birds for Not food and quite. stuff? Not quite. And, and one of the big things is, you know, what happens on the mountain stays on the mountain. Oh, okay. But, uh, we'll just say I slept in a, um, under a tarp for <laughs> several nights um, with no mattress, no shower, and um, I did things that were physically more physically demanding than anything I've ever done. And I've run a marathon in several halves and, and done Whoa. a lot of stuff. So it's it's intense um, physically and emotionally, and and that's what it's supposed to be, you know, to push you to your limits and, and work as a team. And actually, when we left yesterday, um, you know, I said there's usually like a couple people when you're in like a class or something, you're like. I would get paired with them, you know? mm-hmm, yeah. but everyone in that class, I would, I would, after this, I would, I would trust in my life. It wow. It's really awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. And all today we've been like, we miss, I miss you. you oh, know, no you know? way. Yeah, it yeah, worked. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it worked. did, it did. That's the goal, did, right? Yeah. You know, everyone, did you guys have that, that, that quintessential sitting around the campfire telling stories? At, oh, at, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh all yeah. Right. Definitely. And, and as we were all in our tents, you know, everyone's just right next to you. So you can kind of talk. You can and, kind of do that. Yeah. yeah. And it's people that, you know, I never would have encountered if it hadn't been for this yeah, program no and now i you know we can do a lot of good together now now tell the truth okay who who wept somebody had to weep while they were telling that I story can't talk you can't about tell that. no my no, gosh i, I respect no. that all right yeah, that's fair yeah, gotta, yeah. Gotta, gotta, gotta keep it you know under under wraps because yes that's good well if i were story. a crier i might have wept <laughs> I, i'm not a crier at all no you're too tough for that Is i that just a, don't cry no, much so so what what are the tent to tent conversations like is it like psst, I can't sleep. What was it like? That? Well, one night we heard um, a couple of the guys talking about what they had, what they're going to make for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, okay, and well, good. so it was like, Man, really? You guys yeah, must have been hungry. Sleep? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, a couple times it was like, oh, it, oh, I heard something out there. I think, oh, oh. You know, oh, it's an animal. Oh, I have food in my pack. We're not supposed to have this. Their bear's going to get us. And oh my god! Like so it, it was literally all over the place. Okay, what was the best thing you ate while you were out there? Um, one day we had been out all day and the facilitators at the Outward all the meals we had to cook ourselves. Um, but mm. this one they had cooked for us and it was, a uh, it was quinoa and a bunch of vegetables and chicken and like a homemade curry sauce. And that wow. was really good. Okay. So, I mean, everything was really good out there because you were so hungry. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah but yeah. that, it's that actually good. was really good. I thought you were gonna tell me they gave you like a raw potato and some like, you know, some Brussels sprouts or something. No, no? I mean, it was, no, but it, it wasn't, you know, lunches were a little, I mean, yeah. you know, can, There's some can cur- of tuna and a well, knife. You know. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, curry sauce is where you got me. I'm like, man, they were whipping out curry sauce. Well, sauce yeah, nice, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, the guy uh, that made it, he said, well, we had four things in the pantry. We had peanut butter, coconut milk, soy, and a curry powder. So I just made this sauce. And, and you just made yeah. it happen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Talented group yeah. there. Well, that's, that's very cool. Well, yeah. congratulations on that, especially since it sounds like you may not be the outdoorsy type per se. Uh, or? I mean, I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, so okay. well. um, I did used to hike a lot with my dad, but I didn't really like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and my son just got a tent for his birthday because he and my daughter really, really want to go camping. Okay. But I did decide that if we go, when we go, we will have an air mattress because oh, I'm not well, yeah. sleeping on I mean, isn't that what everybody does? You're like compass, check, um, you know, like uh, bullion cubes, check, and then it's like uh, air mattress, check. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, uh, but we, we didn't have an no, air mattress. No, none of that. No. <laughs> okay. no. Or a pillow. Yeah. Not even a pillow? No. Oh my gosh. No. Did you fashion a pillow out of like... My coat, leaves. my coat. Oh, oh your coat. And then All right. we were wearing, I was wearing everything yeah. else to keep warm. It'll it give was, you a whole new appreciation for the survival shows on TV. It, it does. Yeah. It does. And, and bathing. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah, came yeah, right, home right. and my husband said, you got to get in the shower like yeah. before you even come near us. So. Man, you know, it makes you wonder. Hey, I know a, at least one other person who went on this. So, I mean, well done, man. I'm going to have to give him a big handshake and let him know that, yeah. you know, I know that you guys did something legit. Yes. Very yes. cool. Well, so let's get into a little bit about um, yourself, okay? So I've known you, and like I said, a lot of the people who are viewing uh, probably know a, a little bit about your story, but how'd you get into this? I mean, obviously, um, 
successful over a number of years and you've always given yourself back. And, and I think you've chosen roles that have been able to give back to people, help people grow. Um, tell us a little bit about your story and how you got here. Yeah. So I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee and my dad, um, was in sales. He actually worked for Tootsie Roll. Oh, um, wow. so my whole life he had, you know, kind of said, well, you're going to be in sales too. Cause we're, we're very similar. So that's what yeah. I thought I was going to do. So I went to Clemson. Um, I came back and I got a job in sales. Mm. Um, I work for UPS, but I, you know, Hey, I gotta tell you, yeah. I worked for UPS too, Okay, but I was the box loader. Yeah. Okay. Like I was at the bottom of the totem pole. Yeah. You know? No, I, no, you're up there. That wasn't, but, <laughs> and, um, I just didn't like people would say I, I had a territory. I'd go out, you know, try to get businesses and they'd say, Oh, well, I like FedEx because I'd be like, okay. Uh-huh. Like I, I just couldn't get, um, passionate about shipping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or anything, you know, and I thought, I don't want to do this. Right, you right. Know? And so um, I was actually going to go back and try to be a high school teacher. Okay. Because my mom was. And then I ended up moving to um, Myrtle Beach with a then boyfriend mm-hmm. who we, and then we broke up and, and he left and I stayed. Oh, yeah. Of um, but when I got here, I was very fortunate to get a job at the Myrtle Beach area chamber. And that really changed my life mm-hmm. because I met everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know now almost. And um, through that, I was uh, started uh, the Young Professionals Group, which is now, I think it's um, Green Strand YP, but back mm-hmm. then it had another name. And, yeah, and we yeah. did community service projects, and we gave back. And, and working there, they were very um, all about the community and, and participating and allowed us to be involved in things. So I really started to enjoy that, and a lot of my friends were into that. And so from there, I went to a, the hospital foundation at Conway. Um, but I knew I wanted to get more in direct services to really see. So that's how I ended up then at Habitat. Mm-hmm. And that really changed um, a lot because I worked directly with people that I really understood um, a lot more about the needs in our area. Mm-hmm. You know, people think, oh, well, if you if you have needs or, or you need um, certain types of government help, then, then you're lazy or, or you're not trying. And that's mm-hmm. not the case. I mean, we have a very, very low wage paying area. Yeah. And so if you're working full, full time at 10, 50 an hour, it's hard to afford a thousand dollar, um, apartment. Absolutely. When you have, you know, one, maybe two kids. And so, um, and, and I think that's been the case in Myrtle beach for quite some time. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're a place where we, we attract a lot of people who come to town and have money so they can afford to maybe not, not intentionally, but they're driving up the prices of mm-hmm. things, but we still are very much a, a tourist-based area with low-paying jobs, oh, yeah. right? Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. And so when I was there, I did um, I oversaw the home buyer program and did uh, the financial education. Mm-hmm. And from a very young age, my parents taught me how to budget um, and and how to do that. But what I encountered was people they they just didn't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, they 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 truly didn't know. It, it wasn't that they didn't want to pay their bills on time, or that, but they didn't understand. I mean, I, you know, you're explaining of like, okay, you get paid on the first and fifteenth. Your water bills due on the eighth. So pay it when you get paid on the first. Well, well, no, I might need it for something. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I got to hold on to it. I'm like, well, you need it to pay your water, but well, it's really not due on the eighth. It's actually due on the day it's cut off. And I'm like, no, no, oh, no, no, no. Man. But I mean, wow. that that was, you know, just what they had been taught. Now, um, now, Blakely, before we get on from that, let, you know, let's talk about how does that happen. And and I mean this in the in the, you know, you've been in this field for a while. Is that something that is, is kind of like passed on, you know, mm-hmm. is, is it very much like, okay, well, that's how I learned how to yeah. do it. And, and then generational, right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's hard, to, you know, some people want to almost like judge like, oh my gosh, you know, why do they do that? But it's like people do what they kind of have learned to do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And, and mostly everyone said, well, this is how my, my mom taught me or my grandparents exactly. taught me. And, and I had one lady tell me, she said, I, I don't know anybody that pays their bills on time. Hmm. And I said, well, well I do. And she said, well, you're the only person I know. Like, because yeah. I just, you know, and, and again, when you're making such a low paying job and then you have one unexpected $500, you know, a blown tire or you miss work, then, then it just, makes everything just fall by the wayside. And Mm so from that, um, seeing really that a lot of people also didn't understand how people could get in that situation, that it wasn't, I mean, yes, there are people out there that make bad decisions and, and, Mm -hmm. but for the most part, people just don't, you know, you can't buy a used car if you don't have a down payment. Right. So then you see people, Oh, well they're driving a brand new car. Well that you, 
I mean, that that's the only choice they may have because yeah, they, yeah. they have to. And then, you know, because of maybe bad credit, then you've got this astronomical interest rate and don't even get me started on loan as pay as you go places or <laughs> right, right. rent to own furniture. But, um, so when I was in that role, I, I really then wanted to think, okay, how do we let people know about the resources for these people so they don't get to this point? Mm-hmm. Um, and the direct service was hard, you know, because you get invested. I mean, like Cheyenne, like we're, yeah. we're very close still. So, um, while I was on maternity leave with my daughter, the opportunity came for United Way, and I thought, I can't do that job. I mm-hmm. mean, that's too big. And somebody said, well, no, you could try. And so I, I, you know, threw my hat in, and the rest is history. No way. Yeah. You know, and like it was just like that. I mean, I well, and, and I, I think it's like I, I do know you're very humble because, you know, obviously I think – it was not too big for you. I mean, obviously history would show it was, it, it was a really good move for you over to go that route. And that's kind of how we got to re reacquaint, uh, you know, a little bit later here, but tell me about your, your proudest thing to this point in your career. Um, you know, obviously there's, there's probably a lot of little things that you would point at, but is there any one thing that stands out or, or one or two things that you're like, wow, that was just great. I think, Back in the beginning, one of the, the proudest things was, was when myself and a group of um, other young professionals started the Young Professionals Group. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we knew that there was a need, and this was, you know, 15 years ago. And, um, and we thought, well, maybe we'll get like 100 members. And we had our first event, the Boathouse. We thought maybe we'll get a co- – we had – from that night, we had 500 paying members. What? After that first event. Are you serious? Yes. Like, so, so what, what made that so successful? Was there just a gap truly for young professionals? Cause now I feel like everybody's got a young professionals group, but th- was this just the first of its kind? Yeah, or there what? was, there wasn't anything. And, you know, there were a lot of kids obviously from coastal and then, you know, people my age and all my friends, um, that, that wanted to be involved and want to be active, but just didn't know how to do it. And so mm-hmm. that I remember leaving that event going, Oh my gosh, like we just did something really amazing. And, yeah. And so that was that was really cool. Wow. That is sure. really cool. Yeah. yeah. There's something to be proud of. Yeah. You, yeah. Is, is your like face on a plaque somewhere at the young professional? <laughs> no, you know, <laughs> now people say, Oh, I'm part of Grandstand YP. And I'm like, you know, it was called Gia scene and there were these, you know, but when it was uh, pure, yeah. now it's got, no, 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 no. But, um, <laughs> so, awesome. so that was really cool. And yeah. I think, you know, uh, Obviously, anytime I still get um, texts, I got I got a text from another homeowner from Habitat just uh, last Thursday with pictures of her new grandson, and and when wow. they'll text and say I got a new job, and so those are always really exciting. And then I think you know where I am now, we totally restructured how the United Way is is operating, um, which was a huge feat, and so um, that's that's definitely a big accomplishment. Yeah, no, it's really cool. Let's let's talk about United Way a little bit. I think that. A lot of people have heard the name United Way, okay? Mm-hmm. It's not like anybody's like, oh, I never heard of this organization. Mm-hmm. But I don't think a lot of people truly understand what it does. Could you kind of give a, a like a maybe a 60-second overview or however long it takes? Yeah, so yeah. that is true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't know. So United Ways are, are separate um, entities all over the country and world. So United Way of Horry County, we're our own 501c3. We have our own board. We fundraise locally, and we, we the money stays local. Mm-hmm. So there is a United Way worldwide that we um, we pay pay a percentage to, and I'm, I literally mean a percentage, mm-hmm. a percent, um, to be able to use the the logo and to have access to certain um, campaigns like Publix, which is 20% of our revenue, so it, it well pays for itself. But they don't dictate how we, we do anything. So it's very much up to each individual United Way to do to serve their community how they see fit. And so what we do here now is our main focus is on um, kindergarten readiness, access to mental health resources, and um helping people become more self-sufficient. Wow. That's, that's really cool. I, I want to take a step back. Did you say Publix? Publix is, supermarkets. Is, wow. That's, um, what, what is it about a company from your experience that makes them commit to such a large, um, I, I don't know, donation might not be the right word, but you know what I mean? Like, cause there's so many companies out there that could have done something like that, but Publix says, yes, let's do it. Let's go make the splash. So they, um, their founder, Mr. Jenkins, mm-hmm. um, just got involved in the cause when, when Publix started years ago down in Florida. Mm-hmm. So we're the only um, nonprofit that runs an employee campaign at their 
at all of their um, supermarkets. Now, they'll do other campaigns for, like, March of Dimes, you know, for the customer, but for the employees. So they encourage all the employees, and then they also do a corporate match on top of that. So wow. I'm really excited we're getting two more publics in Amory County. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really cool. <laughs> because you get it, – it all, it's all about what's located in your county. That, that's what you, you receive the um, donations from. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I always look at it as um, – and I can say professionally, I feel like the – the most growth I've ever had as a professional has been when I was giving back. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, you know, cause I did something really good at work and everybody's impressed. It was always cause I was doing that extra thing, giving back to Habitat mm-hmm. for Humanity or watching somebody grow. So that has always been kind of my, my mm-hmm. thing. So when I look at a company like Publix, I'm saying, I think there's something to be said for just good karma too. I, you know, wh- whatever you want to call it, I think there's something that helps people get ahead. That's yeah, almost biblical. And, and they're, you know, managers, they're always reaching out to us for ways, you know, their employees will come and do food distributions with us. We had our day of caring last week. There were employees up there. So, I mean, they're very big on, you know, their employees having the opportunity to give back. And so they're, they're a great partner. They're yeah. They're a wonderful partner. Well, and, and this is something that you do with other companies mm-hmm. locally. So if you were going to tell a company to get involved, you know, I know at uh, Monarch Roofing this year, we have um, each of our employees agreed to mm-hmm. commit a uh, certain amount of their paycheck and that's going to go back to United Way. Is this something that you're seeing more people get involved with? So that's really how United Ways um, for a long time received all of their funding. They were the only ones in the marketplace I'll say marketplace, the only nonprofit that were able to do payroll deductions, so employee contributions. So mm-hmm. for years and years, that's how um, a lot of United, that's how we had survived. And so then over the years, you know, employers want to give their employees other opportunities to do other things. And when I talk about other employees, I mean like a lot of the large banks, you know, mm-hmm. for years, we were the only agency that employees could, could donate to. And then some of them changed it, say, okay, well now you can do, um, you, you can pick what, what you want to do. You know, maybe it's United Way, maybe it's Habitat, maybe it's, you know, cancer society whatever and so um it's and, and back in the day two people say oh well when i got my job it was like you have to give to united way you know? uh, yeah, which we yeah. never want that to be the case and so really part of us changing our strategy was because we were having those employee campaigns shrink because people were having more options and you had a different um mm. workforce come in that wanted to be more involved it wasn't just about giving that paycheck you know they wanted to be more active and, and really see where their money was going and so those employee donations um campaign contributions were going down. So we had to look of other ways to diversify our revenue through grants and through larger gifts. And so by us selecting, you know, access to mental health is our key point in health instead of funding 15 agencies that, that worked with health, which could be anything from dental to medical to, to heart. Rate, yeah. I mean, heart, it was all over whatever. the place. Now yeah. we can say everything we're doing is about access to mental health because all of those things, you know, affect all these other ways. And, you know, if people aren't, if that's not their passion, then that's okay. We understand that, you know, there's other places that they can go, but we really feel like we have a great, um, partnership with gosh, I mean, almost probably 75 nonprofits around here that we work with and um, work with the government agencies and the school district and all that to really make sure that what we're doing is being measured so we can see this is exactly what we're doing. And, And to be able to show like your dollar actually helped, you know, decrease the suicide rate, which is we're number five in the, in the state for, or decrease the overdose rate, um, overdose death rate, which we're number one in the state for. So those are the things wow. that we're trying to, to work to accomplish. Is, is that per capita? Like when you yeah. say we're number one in the mm-hmm. state, wow, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, and I do want to circle back around and talk about some of these other kinds of statistics that I don't think people know. Um, I, w- I would like to kind of take a, a, a step back and, and kind of understand this one thing. So when you talked about the United Way, so you might go to a different United mm-hmm. Way that's in a different location, and there's a board that has to decide what you guys want to um, or, or what you're going to put the funding towards. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Uh, how, how does how does how do you come to that? Is it like a regular board where people are actually voting and saying, you know, here's what I think we should do and and why, and you vote on it or what's that? Yeah, like? so like uh, Black River United Way, which is Georgetown and Williamsburg County, their three main initiatives are third grade reading, disaster, and disaster re- resiliency. Mm-hmm. Um, for us, and what most United Ways do, and, and I'm pretty sure Black River did this as well, is we didn't want the board to say, you know, I think we should do this. So we actually did a community needs assessment. Um, we got over 5,000 responses back on a survey we, we put out. Um, we had 20 community conversations all throughout Horry County and places I'd never heard of or been. We, we had one totally in Spanish to really talk to community members about what their wants and needs were for the community, um, what they wanted to see for their children. And then from there, 
and then paired that with the statistics of, okay, we're number one in overdose rates, mm-hmm. we're number five in, in suicides and suicide ideations. That has to do with mental health. Obviously, there's there's a lack of mental health resources. You know, with kindergarten readiness, um, our kindergarten readiness rates, they just came back out, and, the, and they are a little higher. I think they're in the 30s, but they were at 24.7% for Horry County. Wow. And you have places like Myrtle Beach, which had 11% kindergarten readiness, and children of color at 7. Yeah, so, so, and let's put some some understanding of this. Mm-hmm. What what would be a, a preferable rate if you're and just, like, let's say some of the better standard cities that have these numbers? Well, I mean, you want everyone. To, so to you want to be like 100, <laughs> obviously, well, but what's... Um, I mean, know. we want to increase it, and really yeah. we want to have the, the opportunity for all children to ha- be able to to thrive at their highest level, yeah. and so what that means is is their access to affordable and accessible childcare, um, or if people are staying home with relatives or family members, you know, before kindergarten, are they aware of the things that they need to work with their kids on? You know, I mean, just talking to a, a baby and using words and reading, but you know, you may think my husband would go, "Why are you reading to our kids like they're two months old?" Mm-hmm. There's so many statistics that show reading and using those full words instead of the Google Gaga. You know, really, it helps with 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 how the brain develops and, and, and talking and saying, "Okay, we're going to put on your clothes, we're going to change your diaper," instead of just saying making up made up noises that it yeah. helps because they learn so many words wow. per day. So that's awesome. I mean, now you're right down my alley of, you know, you talk about childhood development. Mm-hmm. So much of it is, is young. Have you ever done anything like, uh, uh, some of the personality profiles, like the Enneagram test? Um, I've done the, um, disc assessment. Oh, and yeah. I've done the, okay. um, Oh, the one, uh, strength finders, strength finders. So what's, what's your disc assessment? Do you remember? Uh, very, very high. I, Oh yeah. Good figure. Um, and high D <laughs> high, high I and high D I, you know, are you sure you don't need a job? I always hire ID. So that's only my <laughs> thing. Influencer driver. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. So talking about, um, the mental side of things and, and mental health, um, why is it that, that this area is particularly struggles in that zone. And I guess for that matter, you talked about uh, drug overdoses as being particularly high too. What is it about this area that you've seen um, that's causing those kinds of numbers and how do we change that? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of it, I mean, some of it can go back to, you know, when you have, um, we're struggling to make ends meet with our high cost of living and our low wages, you know, that, that adds to that mental stress, which can kind of turn into things. But, uh, of some of it too, was during COVID we, you know, there was one point in time that Myrtle beach was the, the most, um, hardest hit community in the country from COVID in terms of things closing down and, and people not having resources. And so we, a huge spike obviously came up with mental health. Mm-hmm. And I think too, people are now talking more about it than they used to, <clears throat> you know, it used to be something, well, you know, well, it's like, I don't, yeah, and nobody so, wants to talk yeah, about it. Yeah. But, and yeah. so that, that has really come into play and just the availability of resources. You know, mm-hmm. we are a very large County, um, and we do have several, you know, hospital systems and we have a lot of doctor's offices, but you know, the mental health field in particular for children, I mean, it's, it's very hard to get resources and if you don't know where to turn and you don't know where to get it. Um, you're not going to have it. And then of course, a lot of those mental health problems can turn lead to, drug addiction and, and things like that. And, and, you know, where we are located in the tourist area and, and along that, this corridor of, of a lot of drug trafficking and all that. So it all kind of culminates, you know, to, to make those problems happen. So it's almost like these are coping mechanisms in a yeah. way, yeah. Um, you yeah. know, so, so you get into the situation and then, you know, it's like, how do I handle this? And so you guys look at other resources. How do, I guess this is a marketing question as much as anything. How do you get this word out? Because I know that, that you offer the service and, mm-hmm. and certainly can expand upon that, but how do you get the word out? Because I think that some people just don't know this is even available, you know? Yeah. So one thing that we try to always, and I always say I'm going to get tattooed on my forehead is two one one. Two one one. Do you yeah. know about two one one? I do know about two one one, but only because you told okay, me. Okay, <laughs> because most people don't. <laughs> right. Um, but two one one is a number that is a it's a it's a national number, mm-hmm. but in most communities it's run by United Ways, and basically it's like nine one one, but for resources. Mm-hmm. So anyone can call it. And um, they're connected to a, a call center here in South Carolina, and we we pay to have it here in Horry County. It's run through our state association. And the first thing they're going to ask is, what zip code are you in? And then they're going to ask you what your need is. And it can literally be anything from I need food, I need help with rent, to I need dentures, I need help with child care, I need help signing up for Medicaid, I need 
funeral expenses. I need, I mean, literally you, you name it. That's incredible. By the way, I mean, like, I don't want to undersell that. 211 yeah. Yeah. could literally be just about anything, yeah. you know. I mean, don't get silly with it, but it's almost anything. Yeah, and so people say, oh, we need a resource guide. And we're like, well, we have one because it's, it's constantly updated. Yeah. And um, last year we had over almost 5,800 referrals mm. for over 600 types of needs. Gosh. And um, at our last report, I looked at the six-month mark. We were 30% over where we were the year prior. Really? So it's really just about getting the word out for mm-hmm. people to know. You know, so we're always, you know, we're, we're putting on billboards and we're trying to promote it um, because that way too. And then if for some reason they can't help, there's a way that then we have a, a local person that she's our community resource coordinator. So she's actually out in the community helping people if, you know, they need help then filling out those forms or mm-hmm. with financial budgeting or, you know, kind of a step further. So, um, I mean, two in one, I mean, it, we, we've got all of the, you know, uh, resources for mental health, all the resources out there, you know, that we kind of talked about. Um, and the thing to be a resource on two and one is you either have to have a sliding scale or offer your services at no cost. Okay. So it's not like there's businesses on there that they're, that we're going to send them to a predatory, you know, business right, or anything like right. that. They're all vetted and, um, you know, most of them are nonprofits. So the, the cool thing is, is not only will they say, if I say, Oh, I, I need help with my rent. They're not going to say, we'll go here. They're going to say, we'll go here, but here's when they're open. Here's what you need to take. You need to have an appointment and here's, you know, who they're going to serve. So you're not just running around town, you know, all over the place, um, when you're in crisis. Yeah, that makes sense. I, so many opportunities to use something like 211 for yeah. sure. And and I, I think back to just places where I've been like, who do you call for this? Yeah. You know, that happens, right? And you don't want to call 911 for God's sake, because, you know, if you, you make the wrong call, they're like, sir, that's not what this is for. But, you know, you see that person who seems like they're in distress, but, you know, but you don't want them to, you know, get picked up or anything. We had, now this is, this is a true story. Out here at the office at one point, we had somebody sitting on the concrete outside of our building. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, I want to say it was probably 35 degrees. It was during mm-hmm. the winter one day. And I was just like, who do I even call here? Mm-hmm. And and at the time, I did not know about 211. I ended up calling you know, 911 because mm-hmm. I was like, this person is going to freeze. Mm-hmm. And they were just you know a little mentally uh, mm-hmm. unstable and ultimately found a church for them. And you know, that kind of took took care of them and went from there. But uh, I think 211, huge resource. Yeah. And we work, you know, with, with law enforcement and, and the governments to make sure that, you know, when they're out there, they, they are aware of 2112 so mm. that it's not just going, well, I don't, you know, because yeah. just because you may have law enforcement involved doesn't mean someone needs to be arrested. Right, right. <laughs> and they exactly. just need to know about those resources. And in fact, we actually have two um, phones down in the city of Myrtle Beach. We're getting two more. They're emergency phones. So there's two buttons on them. One dials 911 and one dials 211. So um, in a lot of the, the downtown area. So if you don't have access to a phone, um, you could just dial the, press that button and wow. they give you those right there. That's really cool. How did you pick what spots you're going to do that in? Um, well, so we're, um, we're part of a homeless, um, coalition and chief proc when she found out about two and one was kind of like, Oh my gosh, like, why are we not promoting this? Like, mm. why are we not doing this? And, yeah. and someone in the group said, you know, it'd be really cool if it was like, you know, on campuses where they have those, those blue phone, those phones with the blue lights. Mm-hmm. And so chief Proc got, she really made it happen. She got with the, um, you know, the company that does the phones out at the jail and, and we got HTC involved and, and now we have the, these phones out there. And so it's really cool. Cause we can see, we get a report from HTC cause we pay to have the phone lines yeah. to see how many calls. And I mean, it went up from, you know, at the beginning we did have like four calls a month or 10 and now we're up to like over a hundred calls at each phone a month. My gosh. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations on yeah. that. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a hundred more calls yeah. that are helping somebody's life and and by the way chief proc she's a good one. Oh, she's awesome yeah i mean she's like awesome. you want to talk about a good ambassador for the area and somebody yeah. who's really trying to push us forward always appreciative of them for yeah. sure yeah. yeah super cool um i'm gonna go way back um as far as you know united way great things um you said you went to clemson and and now and and who do you pull for now because i still see you around you're going to the coastal games and and stuff i mean do do you have a preference or are you still just Clemson at heart? So I grew up a volunteer. Oh yeah. Well, that makes sense. And Tennessee. So yeah. I'm a diehard Tennessee volunteer. Oh, that's so bad. Like, no, I'm just kidding. That, that <laughs> Alabama game aged me <laughs> many years. Yeah. Um, solid five years on your life. Oh, at yeah, least, yeah. At, at least. least. Um, so Tennessee's probably my, my, you know, 
number one. That's like your number one. Have you ever talked to Peyton Manning? I mean, are you guys like oh, close? Yeah, we're, being... Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I call him all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. sends me stuff. Yeah. Good guy. Good oh, quarterback. Great, yeah. great, yeah, yeah, great family. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're like super close. So. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but I do love Clemson. Yeah. And I and my parents said, well, it's orange and they're not in the SEC, so they'll never have to play. But they did play right. my senior year. And I did cheer for Clemson at that game. You did? Okay. But, well, um, yeah. you know, obviously love Coastal. My husband went to Coastal for um, – a little bit and play baseball and and we we love going out there and supporting the local team and coastal is a great partner of ours as well so yeah you know, and and coastal typically doesn't play tennessee or clemson so yeah so it's it's yeah. pretty fair game yeah. how do how does coastal carolina support uh united way like how, how have they been supportive yeah so well they have an employee campaign that, mm-hmm. that, that's been great um one of the ways too is their athletic department we have a program that started back when coach bennett was there mm. called caring for kindergartners and it started with the football team reading to a few kindergarten classrooms and now the entire athletic all of the student athletes there's a day that we we have it's usually in february and they'll go out and read to every kindergarten classroom in the county and we'll have an activity um we've had some of the football players um you know purchase call us up to want to do gifts for for certain families and and communities if, if we were aware um and they're just always you know really really supportive uh, debbie connor dr debbie connor who works over there is our mm-hmm. campaign chair um and so president benson's been wonderful we've actually held our kickoff for the campaign over there the past two years and so yeah. they've been a great partner of ours for many years back um, when mr singleton was there so that's so cool and and you know to think about these athletes these big burly people and whatever and they're over they're just reading the kids yeah yeah know? yeah it's yeah, really yeah. Cool. i mean I, I feel bad sometimes for maybe like a tennis player <laughs> <laughs> because I think the kids are all wanting, like, you know, oh, they, football. Yeah. <laughs> or, but I think as long as, you know, they have on the coastal gear and Chauncey goes. and, and Goes along. Fun time. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Super cool. Um, yourself, what motivates Blakely? I mean, are, are, you, are you a reader? Are you, you know, what, what gets you pumped up? What makes you like you are? I am a reader, but the books I read probably don't motivate me because I'm very big into thrillers and okay, yeah. things like that. But um, I think just, you know, Myrtle Beach is a small town. Uh-huh. You know, Horry County is small. I mean, it is growing at a rapid rate. But um, to really see, to be able to be part of someone's life as it changes or to know that you had a piece in that or you can see someone's journey like Cheyenne's, like from where mm-hmm. she came to where she is now, I mean, that's really what, what motivates me. And just to see, you know, that people – you know, just need that, that hand up is what we said at Habitat, you know, not a hand out, but a hand up. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think just wanting the community to be as strong as it can. I mean, I have two little kids, so obviously, you know, things that have to do with children is, is important to me, but I think just seeing when people's lives can actually be changed and, and there are things, you know, that we can do here to do that. It's not just, you know, kind of sit around and, and wait for like, the government or someone else to kind of help. We yeah. can all do our part. That makes sense. Um, do you guys still have a, a need for volunteers and, and what kinds of things? Yeah. So um, we just had our huge volunteer event um, up at Finkley Community Center, which um, is always a fun time We with that location changes. Um, but we, we do partner with Low Country Food Bank to have um, food distributions that we have volunteers at in Loris and Conway. Um, and we're also in our new um, kindergarten readiness initiative. We will be needing a lot of volunteers for a new program we're rolling out. Um, hopefully next year. So stay tuned on that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. So somebody says, I want to get involved. What's their next steps? Um, really go to our website, mm-hmm. unitedwayori.org, and there's a list of, uh, of different volunteer activities we have and events. And um, and yeah, we'll find something for them to you, do. You're always going to find yeah, something, Yeah, and if right? not, we, we work with so many partners that we can, you know, point them in the direction if there's something, you know, if very specific they want to do we you know we we may send them to another nonprofit cuz we don't feel like we're in competition necessarily we we're here to really serve and work with those nonprofits so you know it's all about just helping the community on that front you, you know i i do want to ask something before we get to the you know end of the show what are you seeing trends wise with people and donations? And I mean, of time or money, um, because I, you know, everything we keep hearing generationally is that the, the new generations, they do want to get active and involved. Are you seeing that people are more, um, more donating, um, or, or less donating compared to 10 years ago, for example? Well, I mean, like in our case, you know, our campaign had been down, but it was a lot of just, you know, kind of 
tapping that same well over and over again. Yeah. Um, you know, during COVID, the community was very, very supportive. Mm. I mean, we, we had less individuals donate, but those that could really up their gifts. Yeah. Um, and so that was very inspiring. And so um, now it's just, there's just different ways to do it. You know, I mean, we have those individuals that, that do want to give those large gifts. We understand that some can't. Um, and it's really about letting the people know that are giving, whether it's a dollar or, you know, $10,000, exactly what their gift is going to, to show like, okay, we're measuring this to say like, mm-hmm. Now we can show you where the suicide rate has gone down because of, you know, A, B, and C of what we're doing and what we're doing with our partners. So, um, you know, it just kind of depends. Um, it's, it's kind of been interesting because they, it may go down, but, but the, the, the amount of gifts have gone up. And then a lot of the, the companies and local corporations, I mean, obviously you all are a part of that, have, have stepped in um, that, that can help participate. And it's been, it's been really cool. It would be nice. Like, I, I love the fact that you guys have the statistics. And, and it's nice that, that to know I mean, when you talk about a suicide rate going down, mm-hmm. just think about if you could save one extra person's life, how awesome yeah. that is. Yeah. You know? yeah. So um, very cool. Um, is there anything that you want somebody listening to the show today to know about you yourself or about United Way that you feel like that just might not be known? Um, I think the biggest thing that I always, you know, try to get out is that, that United Way is local. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're, well, I'm not donating because your CEO has a private jet. And I'm like, no, we're, we're like, <laughs> right. you know, I'm um, right. just cause tied in with like, like, wait, let's of, clarify. Know. Do you, no, you have, a I private do not jet? have. A okay. Private all right. Check. No. Um, and, <laughs> and we are very, um, transparent with our funding yeah. and, and really make sure that it stays local. In fact, any agency that we fund, they have to show specifically how it's funding only people in Ori County. Okay. Um, that's not to say they can't serve others, but with the money that we're giving them, it has to be serving people in Ori County and they have to be able to show the outcomes and, and, uh, indicators of what they're doing, that it's making a difference. So it's not just about, here's the money, do as you will. We, yeah. we then ask for them. I mean, it's a very rigorous process to um, receive funding. And then what we do with, with if there's gaps, that's where we kind of go out and, and fill them. We're not out there to comp- compete or mm-hmm. duplicate efforts at all. We want to let the people that can do those jobs well keep doing it. You know, I don't, I don't want to you know, ha- run a homeless shelter because I don't know how to do that. But, right, but right. we sure uh, will fund one if it, um, if it you know, is, is showing the outcomes and like New Directions is a, is a great partner of ours. So. Very cool. Very cool. So she will want you to know you are locally operated. Yeah. The money goes back to the local community and that you're, you, you've basically earmarked very specific things that it's going to go to and you're tracking them. Yes. It's very, very cool. Where else would you want to put your money? I mean, I got to tell you, it's, it's an easy, it's an easy thought for me. Um, Blakely, uh, you're doing amazing things for the community. We appreciate it. Appreciate having you on the show today. People call two one one. Get the word out. We need to get this word yeah. out. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and if you're a company out there and you're looking at, you know, how can I make a difference? Believe me, people that are in a community they want to buy from a company that is preferably owned and, owned and operated locally, mm-hmm. but also the one that's active in the community and cares. So this is a great way to do it. So uh, Blakely, appreciate you and appreciate you guys being on the show. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Well. Um, Guys, we appreciate you listening. We'll look forward to hearing from you next time. Uh, Make sure to like us on Facebook and all other social media. We'll see you next time. This is Rob Clemens, Crown and Connections.